pulled pork throwdown on the Weber Summit charcoal grill. Uh, yes, please. Hey guys, it's gonna be a great day today. This is it's beautiful weather. It seems like usually whenever I try to do a long cook like this, it rains. I think we're good. We're gonna cook eight pork butts, eight pulled porks on the Weber Summit charcoal grill at one time. Now, I've wanted to do this forever. Actually, I've wanted to do this ever since John Setzler did something similar on the Man Cave Meals channel six years ago, long before I was on YouTube. I think he was, he recommended everyone try it. I do not recommend doing this. So John, I hope you like this video. Guys, let me show you what I've got going here. All right, guys, you aren't gonna believe what this looks like. So we're about three hours in and this grill is just packed. What I decided to do was kind of push them all together towards the middle um, to keep them off the outside wall of the cooker and then I'm gonna spin them periodically. So we're about three hours in now, I'm expecting, and I'm expecting this to take about 12 total. Um, and I'm also gonna rotate them up and down because as it turns out, it's a lot hotter below than up high, which is, which is different. I wasn't expecting that. So um, I used a John Henry pecan rub for the seasoning uh, and then some briquettes that uh, Royal Oak makes. They sent them to me. This isn't a sponsored thing, but they did send them to me and asked me for feedback. So I thought I'd give them a shot. And yeah, this is three hours in. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these around and uh, rotate them and uh, we'll get on with the cooking. Hey guys, we're at the seven hour mark. I, this is just a public service announcement. Greg Mervich at Ballistic Barbecue told me about this last summer. Uh, this is called a bug assault gun. I'll put a link to it below in the description box. But the idea is you put salt in here, then you cock it and you shoot the flies. I, I kid you not, it's the funnest thing ever. It almost makes flies in the summer, in the summer worth having. I've been cooking it at 225 to 250 the whole time. It's kind of hard to tell though because the thermo there's so much meat in there. The thermometers, it's, it's tough to get a clean reading, but that's what I'm shooting for. 225 to 250, the pork's between 150 and 160. Um, and so I think we're probably at the halfway point at this point. So I'm gonna flip things around, move the stuff on the bottom on top, spin it and, and basically try to get an even cook on all this stuff. All right, let's take a look here. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, these are cooking surprisingly even, not bad. 
All right, I'm gonna flip these around. It, you can see that there's some separation up here. They're not touching. These aren't actually touching at all. So that's good. That means they're cooking thoroughly. So I'm gonna get these flipped around and uh, we'll keep cooking. All right, I had a second thought here. I got my thermopin out and checked the interior of all these and every single one of them is between 155 and 160. So I'm happy with that. I thought for a second these were cooking slower, but after checking the internal, I, I think they're all, they're all cooking exactly the same. So I'm just gonna leave well enough alone for now. I'm gonna give it another three hours, put them back to bed. And then at that point, I'll check them again. And if I need to adjust them, then I will. But for right now, hey, why, why mess with what's working? All right guys, you're not gonna believe this, but for the last hour, we've been under a tornado watch and we just had a freaking monsoon. I mean, it's crazy. In fact, I'm hearing thunder still. I don't know if you can hear that or not. And sirens, you probably can't hear that, but it's, it's nuts, it's absolutely nuts. So I'm not gonna waste a lot of time here, but I will say, uh, yeah, we're 10 and a half hours in. Uh, one question I know that people are asking because every time I do a video like this, in fact, I have a playlist of all the, all the times I cooked on this and crammed a bunch of food in. In, in fact, I'll do that. I'll call the playlist, call, I'll call it Cram It. So I'll put a link here to the Cram It playlist. Go check that out. Last time we did like 15 racks of ribs in here. And everybody has the same question. What do you do with this food? Uh, when, you, when I make a, a bunch of food like this, what do I do with it? And that's easy. Tomorrow morning, my wife will call all our neighbors that are on the meat list and they will drop by and they will take it off our hands and be happy to do it. So this is actually a really fun thing for me because I get to cook with you guys. I get to do like, I don't know if this is gonna be an all-nighter, but it's gonna be a late-nighter. Uh, and <laughs> film it and share it with you and then share the food with them. So it's a win-win-win all the way around. So that's how we do it. But let me show you what this looks like right now quickly before the, the storm comes back. Again, this is 10 and that, wow, this looks so good. This looks so good. Huh. And these aren't even, these are the only two that are touching at this point. And they don't even look that bad. That actually, honestly, this looks as good as anything, anything else I've ever cooked. Um, all right, we're at 170, and that matches what my, uh, what my Maverick XR50 says. 172 on that one. 171 on that, oh, lightning. I gotta hurry, guys. Um, the bottom ones, these are taking a little bit longer. They're probably around 160, 165, I think is what that said. Let me check this one in the back. 162, okay, what's interesting is the, the bottom ones are a little bit softer, but um, they aren't cooking quite as fast. That's fine though. You know, if these finish early, that's fine. Like I said, I think this is just gonna make life easier for me. I like the evenness, these cook, these, these look, like I want them to cook. Uh, these look like I want them to look. You know, truthfully, the only downside with this cook is the thermometers, sometimes it's hard to get a, a reading. This one actually has been around 225 the whole time, but the digital thermometers, probably because um, they're touching the meat, uh, I tried to separate them, but it's kind of hard to do that. And if it's really close to the meat, that's gonna affect the ambient temp. So, um, I think that's really been the only downside to this is getting a straight straight temperature reading on the digital thermometer. But in this case, like, it hasn't really mattered. This one's been close enough and it feels like it's at the right temp. If anything happens, I'll let you know if the storm hits and we get hit by a tornado, somebody get over here and grab this pork.
All right, guys, it's the next day. Y'all, that, that storm was crazy. But before I get into that, please subscribe and hit the ring bell, ring bell, the ring notification. I'm getting more and more people who are long-term subscribers here tell me they're not getting notified whenever I upload. So the ring bell is really, really important. The algorithm changed and if you're not, you don't hit the ring bell, there's a good chance you won't see when I upload. It's very frustrating. But speaking of long-term viewers, uh, you're not dreaming. We actually uh, painted our kitchen and changed out the lights. I'll put a little before and after on here. Um, it's, it's nice, it's nice. Okay, you guys, this storm it was so crazy. I'm sitting outside and all of a sudden this tornadic, the power goes out, tornadic winds start blowing, uh, branch falls off my neighbor's tree. See this gap right here? That's where this tree branch used to be. Like I was out here watching the lightning and all of a sudden I heard this and it landed on the fence. Then what's also crazy is this morning by the time I woke up, the tree trimmers were already out there taking care of business. Oh, and check out this guy, he's already here. Man, talk about fast, that's amazing. So this cook was awesome, guys. It took a really, really long time between the storm. Uh, I did run out of charcoal like the last hour. Oh, so frustrating. Um, so I added more and it drug it out. Between the storm and that, it drug it out. I think, man, by the time I was done, the sun was up and people were going to work. So it was, it <laughs> <laughs> it was a long night, but it, I mean, it was fun. I missed, I, I missed my friends, I miss Troy, I miss Kenneth. Last time something like this happened, uh, there was a tornado that blew through in a hailstorm. We were cooking a 25 pound cheeseburger and all of a sudden the bottom falls out of the sky and tornado alarms start going off. I'll put a link to that uh, video in the description box if you want to check it out. But I did miss my buddies, but I, I love doing stuff like this, even more than eating it. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This pork butt with this cheap 50 cent bun, this sweet <laughs> sweet baby rays, everybody, you can find it anywhere at Walmart, barbecue sauce. This was not just good, this was holy crap good. Like, I'm, I'm not kidding, I'm so pleased with how this turned out. Now, keep in mind, this isn't competition worthy pork. This is backyard pork and I was nervous I was gonna have all kinds of problems with all that pork crammed in uh, one cooker. Nah, it's great. Uh, I could taste the hickory, and the cherry wood, which I didn't mention earlier in the video, I realized I can taste that, but there's something about, in John's video, which again, go check that out, but in John's video, he mentioned getting a lot of grease in his pit, and I think, I think that's what happened to me too, but I think actually as that grease dripped down into the fire, it added a certain, a certain perfect level of acridity to balance out the sweetness of the rub and the sauce with the uh, relatively tame flavor profile, tame sweet profile, uh, tame sweet flavor profile of the rub and, and both the sauce. And it just, it just turned into something really, really special. I would absolutely do this again. I mean, or I wouldn't not do it based on flavor. I might not do it because I have 18 cookers out there and I just don't need to cram this much pork into one, uh, into one cooker, but y'all, this was good. This was really, really good. I, I, I guess my expectations were like, mm, you know, um, but man, yeah, I'm, I'm beyond pleased. So thanks again to John. I appreciate the inspiration. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and hit the ring bell or the, the notification bell so that YouTube will continue to show me my stuff, show you my stuff. And uh, yeah, this was, this was great. Thanks for coming along to this point. I love you. And we will see you in the next one. Outside? Oh, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> you should have seen. There's like, there's like the whole neighborhood's out there. <laughs> Come on in. Come on in. We took a picture and posted it on your Facebook. Did you really? Yeah. Holy crap. Thursday night after fight in 75 traffic. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you think? So good. So good. Did you get my good sign? Yeah, of course.